Hey there, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane. Make sure that you let me know you're here by leaving comments and stuff down that way and you will see your name on screen next time like these lovely people here. Here they are. Last time we got the blocks to be different colours and have different points values. Now we're going to need to start thinking about what we're going to do with those points and a big part of it is going to be displaying it on screen. So this video is going to be about getting the heads up display created and displayed to the player. So, after the title card, let's get stuck in and do that. Moving forward, we're going to be adding some more game style mechanics to this. So we're going to make it so when the ball falls out of the level, we're going to lose a life. And as we hit the blocks, we're going to start collecting points. And we need a way to communicate that to the player. And we're going to do that through the use of a heads up display or HUD, which we'll be creating and adding to this screen in this video. So let's get stuck in. I'm already in my blueprints folder, which is where I need to be, and I'm going to right click in here. And at the bottom of this create menu, you can see that there's a user interface section. Oh, there it is. And at the bottom of that menu, you can see there's a widget blueprint, and that's what we're going to be creating. So we'll click on that. The first thing I'll ask us to do is give it a name. We will. We're going to call it Put or De for heads up display. And then we need to get that open so we can work on it. So double click, and here it is. So at present, you can see this um, rectangle here represents the sort of shape of our heads-up display. And we know that we're currently building for a portrait-style phone screen, so this, this is not going to work really. So in the top right of the screen, you can see it says screen size here. We're going to go down there. We have phones. Uh, and I'm just going to stick to the Samsung Galaxy S4 preset because it kind of fits in with the, the shape I want without being too high-res. So that's what we're going to do. This still leaves it in landscape mode though, which is not what we're looking for. So this little chappy up here, switch between landscape and portrait, is what we're going to use to get this face in the right way. And then just as we do in any blueprint, we can move this around. So I'm going to center it just by clicking with my right mouse button and dragging it into place. Now we can start bringing in the elements that we need from over here, which is called the palette. And the first thing I'm going to create is something called a horizontal box. So I'm just going to start typing this. Horizontal box. There it is. And I'm going to drag that in like so. I'll zoom in on it a little bit. And I'm just going to expand the size of it so that I've got room to do what I need. And I'll get it to contract back down to the size I want in a minute. So this box here doesn't do too much on its own. We need to add some text to it to allow it to display what we want it to. So I'm going to use this text here, which is just a block of text. So I'm going to put one in there and you can see it kind of snaps inside. It knows where we want to put it. And I'm going to put another one. So I've got two text blocks side by side and I've kind of aligned them to the left as well. And then I'm going to select this first text block. And you can see the t details are over here. And here's the text and it currently says text block. So I'm going to change this to points. Oh, not popins, points. And then I'm going to add a colon and a space so that, that it has that little bit um, of extra room before I actually put the score in. And then when I press enter, you can see that that updates. And then for the next text block, I'm going to just put in like a dummy score for now. So let's say that the highest sort of score might be 9,999,999. Maybe if they score more than that, they break the game. So there we go. That's kind of set up as we want it to be. And now what I want to do, we've got a lot of this original box here, this horizontal box that we don't want. So let's click on it. And there's a tick box over here that is size to content. So when I click on that, you'll see that that snapped it back to size and I'm now not using any more of a horizontal box than I need to. So what I want to do now is get this box positioned. So I want to kind of plop it up here in the top left. So you can see the position X and Y currently have values. I'm going to set those both to zero. And that'll stick it right in the top left of my screen. But I don't want it to be right up there because there's no sort of buffer. So I'm going to bring it in by about 30 on position X and 30 on position Y. And that just brings it in a little bit. Now this is where my points are going to be. I also want how many lives we've got left to be displayed top right. And I could go through the process I've just gone through again by creating the box, putting the text in, or I can duplicate what I've already got. So here's horizontal box here. Uh, and I might just call this, I'm going to rename this so I know what, which one it is. So this is going to be points. And then I'm going to right click and duplicate this. 
And you see it gives me another horizontal box. I'm going to rename this one to lives. And then with this selected, what I'm going to do is change the anchor position to the top right. And you see we get a little flowery icon and that's telling us that everything we do with the size and position is in relation to that anchor point. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I now make it zero and zero, it anchors it over here. Whereas this one, you see the anchor point for that one is in its original position and its position is in relation to that. So back onto this lives one, I do know that what I want on position Y, I believe it's Y, is 30. And that gets them at the same height. And I'm also just going to do position minus 30 to give me some of this, just to bring it in a little bit. And then I'm going to align this on X. I think if I make it one, that should align it up about consistently, which looks good. And we see we get points and a number again. We don't want those anymore. So from my hierarchy, this time I'm going to change it to lives. Look at the and then the number doesn't need to be as big at all. It's only going to be um, one digit, really. So what I'm going to do is just put one in there for now. And you can see that's moved across as well. Everything's nice and aligned. It didn't stay too far over. So now we've got the points positioned in the top left and the lives positioned top right. So at this stage, we've pretty much created our heads up display, but it's not going to appear in game yet. We need to set it up so that it will appear in game. So let's compile and save it. And I'm just going to dock this up here. And then I need to get into my game mode. That's where we're going to load in the HUD. So we'll open it, it looks like this. We need to get into the full blueprint editor to get at all the properties. So let's open this up. And the HUD is something that we are going to want to create um, on begin play as soon as the game starts running. So that's, this is the event we're going to be using. So from begin play, let's um, create widget. It's a widget that we created for our heads up display. And then the class from here, we can select the HUD. That's what we called it. So it's going to create that for us. And later, we're going to want to talk between the HUD and the game mode so that the HUD can get the information to display on screen. How many lives have we got left? What's the current score? So what we're going to do is get the HUD, out of the return value, we're going to promote it to a variable, and we're going to call it HUD, and that will help us to get that working later, to get the functionality into the heads-up display. So it's not actually just displaying static values, it can change dynamically based on what's happening in the game. And one other thing that we need to do with this heads-up display is add it to viewport. So we can create it, but we've actually got to get it into the viewport for the game so we can see it. Otherwise, it would be useless. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just comment this up um, and we're just gonna call it add HUD so we know what that's doing. And then we'll compile, save, and now it's time to test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test in two ways so you can see you don't get confused by it. So I'll play first of all, and you can see, let me just release my mouse. Lives is up here and here, which is not in the aspect ratio that we created originally. And that's fine because it's taking up the whole window. So if instead of doing that, I use this drop down and we do new editor window, you can see this is kind of the size and shape that we'll be working with. And it looks to me like our points and lives are pretty much where I want them to be. So I'm happy to wrap up at this stage. If you want to though, you might want to go back into your HUD Maybe change the font, colors, positioning, make it so that you're happy with it. Make it your own, you know, be creative with it. Uh, and then moving on in the next video, we'll get the lives counter working. So we're gonna set how many lives we want the player to start with. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be three. And then we're gonna get this part of the HUD to dynamically show that. We're not gonna start taking lives away just yet. I don't think, we'll see. Um, but we are gonna get the HUD to display that for us. So that's what's coming up next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, innit? I believe that quality education should be available to everybody, and for that reason, all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free, and we're supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon.
If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy Governor and support our work as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.